What's up guys? Welcome back to Half Men Half Tech. My name is Ben, your host. So finally, today when it comes to watchOS 8, I'll be happy to let you know that we now have beta 2 of watchOS 8.6 and this update comes two weeks after the release of beta 1. For me, on my Apple Watch Series 7 that you are seeing here, you can see the actual update size, updating from beta 1 of course. The update size comes in at 181 megabytes. Now, obviously, this is not all that Apple released today. If we go to the Apple developer page, we'll be able to see some other updates that Apple released. And you can see that they released iOS 15.5 as well as iPadOS 15.5 these are beta 2 versions and of course watchOS 8.6 beta 2 and tvOS 15.5 beta 2. Most of these updates I do cover here on the channel at Halfman Half Tech so if that's something that interests you then a sub to the channel would definitely be appreciated. Now as you can see here on my Apple Watch Series 7 I've updated this device to watchOS 8.6 beta 2 so if we go into the settings go to general and go to software update you can see it's up to date and just to verify this if we go to the about this watch section here you can see the version and it's 8.6 and we now have a new build number you can see the build version which is 19t triple five seven d so now we have a build number that ends with a d and compared to the one that we had on watchOS 8.6 beta 1 it actually ended with an F so in a sense we took two steps in the positive directions of two steps forward now in terms of what's new or the new features and changes that came with this update to be honest I looked around in the OS to see what significant changes there could have been but it seems like Apple is focusing on washing out most of the bugs and issues but I wanted to show you something it showed up initially during my test period I had about a day or so to test out this version so I want to show you here if you go into the settings and go to where it says accessibility on your Apple watch right there and click where it says voice over and if you go all the way down you will see hand gestures so click on hand gestures and you can see here for example that you have these customized gestures and if you click for example on double clench let's click on there and you will see here the last option that we have is magic tap so since this is double clench we know that double clench right now does the digital crown press so if we were to go back here and turn on hand gestures and just do a double clench like this it should be able to turn on um, the digital crown and I guess we have to also go back and turn on voice over here so that it activates this now if we double clench like this it should be able to press the digital crown and let me set it like this and as you can see here it did paste or press the digital crown now it's actually saying again the time and you can see again that's equivalent to pressing the digital crown if I do it again it takes me back to the home page and it sort of tells me where I am. Now, after updating to watchOS 8.6 beta 2, I was able to sort of use this uh, feature and I was able to go into settings. Let me just turn off voiceover because it's sort of um, disrupting. So if I go back to hand gestures and go to like double clench, that is the feature or function that we were testing out and go all the way down and remove from press digital crown and change it to magic tap and go back and actually uh, go to voiceover and turn on voiceover here. Voice just takes a moment. So now we know what double clench does. Let's just go here and double clench. So you can see here, it's not registering anything. Let's try that again. Back button. So it's not really doing something, but before I was actually voice able over. to voice use over. this voiceover of uh, magic tap. So if we go there and then go to clench, you can see uh, when I would put here where it says double clench, it will be able to do a magic tap. And before it was actually telling me like the status of where I am, like you are on the 
uh, accessibility page or if I'm at this page you are at the app page or if you are at the watch face page it will be able to tell me but it seems like it only worked once and after that it sort of disappeared so this is a change that I sort of noticed it's unfortunate and I'm unable to demonstrate it here fully but hopefully when watch OS 8.6 the official version comes out this is a feature we'll be able to test out and see how it works fully so that's the first change that I wanted to share with you now if you use Apple pay on the Apple watch and in the wallet app you will actually be able to add um, more cards that are being supported with the wallet app and now Apple has added support for the beacon card support so if you do have that you can actually add it to your wallet and be able to uh, use Apple pay with that particular app I mean card now also something that I wanted to uh, show you here with this update it has to do a lot you know there's a lot of changes that have been updated with the wallet app or, or Apple Pay and the first one has to do with text changes for Apple Pay and other contacts contactless payment methods like credit cards and debit card so Apple has uh, just tweaked a little bit of text and there's a wording change for wallet and Apple Pay although it's not much it's just something that I should, thought I should mention since it's there in the OS and also there have been minor changes to health so within health this you might be able to see or do on your health app on the iPhone so now there have been a minor change to the latest iOS version that allows you to use more health parameters so within this health app you can see you have this ability to uh, add a medical ID and also create an and like an access to your medical ID that you would have created and once you do this you can choose or you have the ability to add your medical ID and share it with a specific contact that you give privileges to and this contact will be able to access your medical information so this is something that I thought I should share for the Apple watch since the Apple watch is responsible for most of these medical functions on iOS as well as watch OS so that's something that's great also again something that has been changed has to do with rebranding of the iTunes pass to Apple account card so if you have an iTunes pass and you add it to your wallet you remember before when it was the iTunes pass you would sort of see like uh, a QR code when you would add your iTunes pass to your Apple watch but now that has been rebranded to Apple account card so you won't be able to see like a QR code like what you are seeing here that's what we used to see before now you'll be able to see the I the Apple account card which has now been rebranded or updated to reflect that so that's also a change I, I should mention to you and now you can also use it when you are buying applications or when you are on the Apple store so that's something that's good that I thought I should update for you it seems like this update is focused a lot on the wallet app there's a lot of um, changes that came to this watch os 8.6 specifically for the wallet i'm not sure why but yeah that's mainly most of the changes that i was able to see if i do find more during my test of this update then i'll definitely let you know and update you but other than that this is how it is in terms of the battery i actually took over a day to release this video i was uh, testing it out but if we go into settings and go all the way back to the general page of settings and go to the battery section here you can see that my watch is actually on seven percent and here you can see that it was last charged on tuesday so basically yesterday at around 4 30 p.m so right now the time you can see it's 6 30 so that's maybe about 26 hours so within 26 hours of usage and of course that includes about seven or so hours of sleep you can see here the the drop and from that time up to now i have seven percent so it's not the greatest usage but it's sort of average and in my opinion since i'm on a beta i'll continue to test it out and it seems like to be 
an average usage and i have an update for you of course when it comes to battery health as there's been a further drop to my apple watch battery health so before on beta one it was on 99 percent and i actually checked this percentage before updating to watch os 8.6 beta 2 so i checked it when i was still on beta one and just before updating it had dropped to 98 percent so as of now this is the new maximum health capacity that i have on my apple watch now other than that guys that's how this update came in for me on my apple watch series 7 let me know what you think about this update and whether you're going to be updating or not also i'd like to let you know of our new website that you can use to support us that has products for like apple watch accessories iphone accessories and mac accessories and even for android accessories these are wow product and if you do like something you'll be in a sense supporting us here on the channel now that's about it for me stay safe and i will definitely see you guys in the next video Peace.